Hello everyone, this is Persephone and today we are going to talk about escape plans. This is also more advanced content, but many people that have been working on realizing that they are abused and that they don't want to leave for someone else are going to need this video. So I'm going to leave it here with everything that you need to know to create your own escape. So we're going to assume that you live in some place surrounded by narcissists, sociopaths or other toxic people who control you and you want to get out. But at the same time, you know, for whatever reasons, previous experience, you've tried it and you failed and so on, you know that they will never, ever, ever let you go. That you have to die with them and that fills you up with despair, with loneliness, with anger and you usually end up self-destructive or just being extremely depressed and extremely desperate. An escape plan is something that has multiple steps and you can follow the steps and you can get out. Your race doesn't matter, your age doesn't matter, your financial state right, state right now doesn't matter. Okay, just stay with me and follow the steps and you can get out. I say this because I got out myself and I can get out anytime again, so, so can you. Before we start about the actual escape plan, it's very really useful to know about financial abuse. 99% of the times people cannot leave because they don't have money or they have money and they don't have access to the money or they don't know if they have money. That's also something that always surprises me. And that's something that doesn't happen by coincidence. All abusers universally know that if you have money, the chances of you leaving and being uncontrollable increase exponentially. So they're going to do the following things that they're all considered financial abuse. Thing number one, prevent you from working. They're going to force you to be a stay at home mom. They're going to homeschool you so that you don't know shit about anything and you don't even have a GED. If you try to work and they cannot stop you openly, they're going to use every way possible to sabotage your work by not waking you up at important times, keeping you up all night, destroying your project on the PC and so on. If you are female in oppressive cultures, they are not going to teach you how to open a bank account. They are not going to teach you how to budget money. They are not going to give you money or probably give you just an allowance that doesn't allow you to survive. If you do work and you are married, they are going to force you to give your entire paycheck to them or keep very little for yourself. Same time, they are going to move you to a place where you're isolated. It could be moving you constantly from country to country, moving you constantly from town to town, moving in the middle of nowhere when there are no people around to socialize, no people to help you, and so on. In the worst, most extreme cases, they could even be your caretaker if you are disabled or pretend you are disabled and collect your paychecks. And this is one of the hardest cases to get out, but you can get out. So the first thing, that you need to do, if you are in a situation right now that you're surrounded by abusers who are not going to let you go, is take control of your emotions in secret. You're going to say, hey, haven't we been talking about financial abuse all this time? Yes, but if you have been in this situation, from my experience, when I realized I was a victim of financial abuse, the first thing that got out of control was my feelings. So you're going to be feeling upset, angry, enraged, and probably want to yell to your abuser or to confront your abuser, the healthier you are, the more angry you're going to feel. Don't do that. Remember the old movie Fight Club where they say the first rule about the Fight Club is that we never talk about the Fight Club? It's the same with the escape plan. The first rule about escape plans is you are not talking to anyone about the escape plan from your family or extended family. If it's your partner, you don't mention it to your partner, you don't mention it to your partner's friends, you don't mention it to anyone that has even 1% chance of snitching you or turning against you. I'm saying that because people are going to be people, so if you're usually the cuck in this story and the scapegoat, many people that you're going to try to reach out for help, they're going to snitch on you and stop you because they think, hey, if this person keeping the peace leaves, who is next? That happened to my family. There were so many family members that years later they admitted that they knew I was abused in the extended family, but my mother is so toxic that if I left, they would think, wow, so now she's going to start having a problem with me. So what if she just stays here to be abused and I have life on easy mode? I know it sounds despicable. I know that 
You probably think that my sister would never do that or my grandma would never do that, but I would say don't even risk. Because every time you try to escape and you fail, it becomes much, much harder. It's like the prison movies where someone wants to escape prison. Every time you have a failed escape, all of the security increases and it becomes harder. Don't say to anyone, unless it's a person outside the abuse ring, that you have reasons to believe that they're going to help you. An online friend, a real life friend, a new boyfriend or girlfriend you found in secret, a good person who saw you and somehow decides to help you, and so on. If you don't have anyone that can help you, just keep to yourself. You're going to make friendships and connections once you are up. In this case, I know I sound extreme, it's better to assume that anyone from the family is going to be an enemy or can be an enemy. In a similar way, weak people from the family, that they wouldn't be enemies, they can actually snitch on you if they are abused, if they are interrogated, or if they are threatened. So it's better to not tell weak people either because you don't want them to be abused. And even if they do get abused, they have nothing to say about you. Second, calm down. One of the things abusers do to control us is make us be constantly stressed, have too much adrenaline, and develop health problems physically and mentally. You have to start observing those things like dissociate. Although dissociation is a very bad thing long term, temporarily I think it's okay to look at it as a third person. If your life is a movie, observe the protagonist like this level of feeling that you watch it, you are interested in it, but you don't fall ill over it. The third is start understanding finances. See, all of what I said up to this point happens only in your head. Okay, we haven't taken actual action yet, but once you understand all of that, action is going to be much easier. You have to do some basic research and understand what documents you need how to open a bank account, and how budgeting and money work. I don't expand on this specifically because each country is different. In general, things that you need to know. You have to open your own secret bank account with no one else on the bank account but yourself, which means you have to be over 18. So if no matter what country you're in, do research online on what documentation you need to open a bank account. Many countries allow you to open bank accounts online nowadays. So you don't even have to leave the house. Even if you're locked in a room, you can still do it if you have the documents. Do you have the documents? Like, do you have any form of social security number that you know? ID, passport, driver's license, and so on. If you have them, start working on creating the secret bank account. If you don't have them, you have to find a way to find the documents Take pictures of them with your phone or photocopy them or get your social security number and then create a bank account. I say those things and you're going to say, are there people who don't know that? I'm going to mention Kim. Kim didn't know that his mother is the main account holder on his bank account, which means that his mother created the bank account and then added Kim, which means that she had full control and full observation rights, to say it like in English in this weird way, in all of his finances, which means he couldn't even buy a pack of gum using a credit card without her knowing. Most of us abused people or ex-abused are like that. My mother was in literally all of my bank accounts, even as a young adult, all of them. That's because my parents always took pride in the fact that we are very well prepared people, we're very like, we don't leave any stone unturned people, so let's have bank accounts in multiple banks. Here we are opening the bank accounts for you. And it was very funny when I was like 18 because I left the home at 17, so for like nine months to one year, I survived having that bitch on my bank account. So I was like the crazy person that I was making money from jobs and I was keeping the money in the house hidden in the most weird places. But after I became 18 and I had the legal right to open my own bank account without anyone knowing, I went to the bank and I asked what's the documentation because I was even too paranoid to search using my computer because I was thinking that what if they have spyware installed, my family is that type. So I went there personally and the banker told me, give me your name, your last name and other information and he said you have six or seven bank accounts. And I was like, what? And he said, yeah, and your mother is the primary account holder in all of them. Like, holy shit. So interesting. So she knew at any given moment if I had money, if I was going to be employed, where the money came from, and so on. So I had to open a bank account only on my name. And if you want to take things a step further, use a bank that 
your family isn't using because my family had a corruptive banker that is my father's friend that even though technically when you are an adult and they are an adult they don't have access to your info the banker snitched information about me to my father so now i pick banks that my father would never think of picking because he doesn't like them i know i sound like insane like from a spy movie but they want to increase your chances of escaping as much as possible so step one you stay calm step two you find all of the necessary documentation step three you open the secret bank account after you have the bank account now what we are going to cross advice from the other side the side of narcissists sociopaths and people who cannot afford morals but get it done because i'm always saying that morals are a luxury and they have a price not everyone can afford them what do i mean by that if you have a job and you're already making money it's very good and it's going to speed things up because you are going to start cutting off expenses while the abuser keeps thinking that you have those expenses still and all of the extra money doesn't matter if it's five or ten dollars or fifty dollars is going to go into the secret bank account okay which means are you eating lunch that costs let's say ten dollars per day at work buy something that costs five don't eat some days i'm sure that i'm advising people to self-abuse but sometimes it's necessary or are you taking public transit can you walk home can you take the bus or the train or whatever for less stops and pay less anything that you can do that saves up money that your abuser is not going to notice has to be silently siphoned into the secret bank account if you don't work things are harder but usually you have access to some kind of money for example let's say your abuser gives you money grocery shopping go to different grocery stores different supermarkets and buy things on discount and when the abuser usually thinks that okay i'm going to give this person 30 dollars to do the shopping do it with 25 and take the other five and now there are many good people who have a problem with this and say you're stealing money you're lying when the game is dirty you have to be dirtier you're playing against people who are going to be aiming to take your life they're going to waste your life away so they are convenient because let me tell you something abusers are not usually happy they are the most miserable people ever but they want to be miserable in their convenience so you have to be there to be their support their narcissistic supply their cock whatever you want to call it if there are bank accounts that they have your money inside and no one is giving them to you if you can take money from there if they give you an allowance from there from time to time that also has to be going in secret most of it as much as you can on the secret bank account and your behavior in the meantime has to be the exact same you can't look more desperate or more angry you can't look happier and in anticipation of your escape you have to build a poker face i've actually sat down and did research when I was about to escape on poker faces from poker players. How to not show emotion, how to act completely different, the exact same. I know it sounds creepy, but it helped me. So do research in whatever things you do when someone is provoking you and avoid doing them. So the money are going to keep increasing on your account and you are at home. Let's say you are one of those people who is at home all day. Thanks to the internet, you can start an online business that is going to give you extra money to leave home and is also going to give you a skill that you can use when you leave home. And I'm going to mention here a caveat. I'm not saying that you necessarily have to do sex work, but this is a story that always inspires me. Lana Rain was extremely abused by her parents, which is a very famous cosplayer and one of the top caveats. And she did coming in secret. She saved up $10,000 and then she escaped in New York. Because it was something that she could do from home when her mother was working and she couldn't see it. You don't have to do comic. Most people have a skill. Anything you can do that you can earn money on the side without your abuser knowing, do it to make money. I say this because luckily many abusers don't know enough about technology. My family is an exception that they are technological freaks. But if your abuser is some old dumb person, I knew a girl, again, like an example, that she had an abuser that the abuser didn't know that you can make money from tweets. So the abuser let her play a game that you can accept tweets donations. And she was playing and people made donations. And 
After some point when it became clear that she was an abuse victim, people gave her a lot of money. So she was able to buy a cell phone that she didn't have one, call her mom, and her mom came from the other kind, uh, side of the country to pick her up with a truck. So if you can do something like that, that the abuser thinks it's nonsense, but you're making money out of it, by all means, do it. Another thing that you need to do is you need to plan for retaliation after you get out. Because let's say everything goes well and you escape to go, hopefully, to a person that can actually help you. Or even if you are alone, you escape in a nearby town, you rent a place, you find a hotel, anything. The first thing the abusers do usually is to create a bunch of bullshit problems. They're going to report you missing, they're going to report you mentally ill, they're going to threaten you, they're going to threaten to kill your pets. So if you have pets, either you take them with you or you rehome them before you leave or you hide them. You never leave the pets with the abuser, you never leave your kids with the abuser because they're going to be hostages. They're going to be literal hostages and they're going to say, if you ever want to see your kid or if you ever want to see your dog again, you have to come back. And then you have to come back and then the circle begins with you being abused more harshly. One thing that you can do is contact pro bono lawyers or look up legal advice online. There are subreddits like our legal advice and so on that you can ask and get not the perfect advice, but you can get a general idea of your condition. Like what can people do to you if you decide to leave? In most cases, when you're over 18, the answer is nothing. They can create drama, but no one can drag you back to a house when you're over 18. 90% of the cases, the victims of abuse, unfortunately, end up moving back by themselves because they run out of money. But you are the smart type. You have done everything that we said. You have an idea of how finances work. You control your finances. So you're not going to be dragged back penniless. Okay. So one thing they usually do is they make fake police reports and fake embassy reports like it happens to the kings. I was caught by surprise by his stable mother but you're not going to be caught by surprise, which means you have every right to go to the police preemptively and make a question about that or file a statement. You don't have to start saying the entire drama about how your mother hates you and she abused you and she's going to be stalking you forever. Just say, I have some problems with my relatives and I have a reason to be afraid that they're going to do welfare checks on me or file missing reports. What can I do? Where I am, and no, I'm not going to disclose my location, you can make a written statement, either with a lawyer or without, and make clear that you are not missing, that you are in good health, that you are saying, and that you don't want to be harassed. And leave it at the police station. They can be in their server, everything is electronic now, so if someone wants to declare you missing, you're not missing. And the police is going to say, we're sorry, this person is not missing, they have already contacted us, so you have to stop. If you don't want to do that, you can just be mentally prepared that they're going to actually file those requests. And when you get contacted by the police, you can say the same things verbally to the police officers. Thank you. I'm really on good health. I'm saying and I do not wish to come back. Please don't search for me anymore. And if your abuser keeps harassing you and harassing you and harassing you, that's stalking, that's criminal behavior, and it's going to speed up a restraining order against them. But because I like to avoid extremes, such as restraining orders, lawyers, and so on, because maybe your budget won't allow it, let me tell you, the best thing to do is to go preemptively to the police station and explain the situation, or to go to a place where there is free legal advice and explain the situation. There are things you can do that they're going to make it much harder and make the abuser look lame and like a crazy person. Because I'm always going to be repeating you that. You are weak because they have conditioned you to be weak. If you strip away all of your feelings and you look at the facts, you are over 18, you're sane, they have no right to keep you hostage in a house or in a relationship. They have just conditioned you that you'll not make it out on your own. From my experience as someone who got out and hundreds of other people that I've talked to that got out inside the house, it was much harder than anything that I faced outside the house. Because inside the house, it's like 24-7 abuse, hopelessness, and they couldn't fight back. Outside the house, I can fight back. After all of those things happen, you have the money, you have the documents, you have asked legal advice just in case. Go through your stuff and start decluttering everything and pick the stuff that you are going to be taking with you. Don't expect to do an escape plan successfully with four suitcases and 
three laptops and 10 cats and so on. Your mobility is screwed, you're not going anywhere. So ideally, even if you can't pack your things yet, have everything ready that what are you going to take with you? If the answer is nothing, you live with the clothes on your back and that's fine. I know people who left with their clothes on their back and they are still fine. They are thriving. I'm saying that because in some cases you have a very small window when the abuser is not at home. If the abuser leaves for only 30 minutes per day, you're not going to be sitting there packing like a moron for 30 minutes per day. You take the absolute necessities, your medication, your laptop, your phone and yourself and out of the door. That's about it. You have to adopt a Spartan mentality. Anything that you can lose besides like beings who are alive, like your pets, your kid, yourself, can be replaced. It's not worth you getting caught trying to leave. Okay. So in case things are not so extreme, have a list of 10, 20 items that you absolutely want with you. I recommend against getting things with sentimental value and bullshit and mementos and rewards. Just get things that you are going to need to use. Okay. All of this takes time. It can take weeks. It can take months. It can take over a year. What do you do in the meantime? You don't sit on YouTube watching nonsense. You don't escape playing video games. You level up your life stats. That's how I like to call it when I was trying to help Kim, who is a gamer. I would say, what are your real life like stats? What's your, what are your cooking skills? Do you have any cooking skills? He didn't know how to even cook an egg before he met me. Look on YouTube, like recipes you can cook that they are cheap and they can feed you and they are nutritious. Look how to change a tire if you plan to escape using a car. Look anything that you can learn that can be useful later on because usually after long-term abuse, you're quite quick crippled, you know, you don't know how to do anything. The world has moved on, you're still stuck in that house and those four walls and you're not going anywhere. So it's time to level up together with the other people your age who are not living insane lives. This is going to keep you occupied. It's going to give you a sense of accomplishment and also you have to keep doing all of those things in secret so that the abuser doesn't suspect anything. If you want, you can tell them a fake story about why you're doing it. You can tell the abuser, you know, I decided to learn to cook my own food to help around the house. Something that shows what kind of nice little cat you are to keep them, to keep their mind off of suspect. When the time to leave approaches, always make sure to delete your history, always make sure to not leave your phone, messages there from whoever is helping you and so on. Act paranoid if you have to. Because I know many abusers that we don't know it, but they still check our stuff from time to time, they open our mail and so on. Don't leave any stone unturned. And if there is someone who is going to help you, give them a very clear image of what they are going to be dealing with. And you're going to say, if the person finds out what my family truly is, they're not going to help me. I don't believe that. I believe most people who will go as far as to decide to help you and tell you that I'm here for you, you can come meet me and I'm going to help you escape. Those people are pretty tough people because the average cucked person doesn't even say that. So it's better to give them as much information as possible about who they are up against rather than lie to them. I say that and Kim never believed it, but if he had contacted me and he was honest about the fact that his mother is like pretty much poisoning his life and he's going to die, I would have helped him. I'm not afraid of any old xenomorph bits. But when he lied to me and he said, I have a supportive mother and she started all of those attacks, I started to feel that he's also my enemy because he was enabling her to hurt me without giving me tools to hurt her back. And it took me a very long time to actually start grasping what the hell is going on with that individual. So you don't have to be extremely dramatic, but you can say to the person you're staying with, you know, probably my mother is going to show up to your house. Let's have 911 like on hold if that happens so that let's record what happens. Let's file a complaint and so on. So that the person knows and they're mentally prepared. And when the day comes to leave or the night, I don't know what your situation is. You wait, you wake up in the morning, you act completely normal, you wait until everyone is out of the house, and then you run. And when you run, you have to have 100% or even 90% mental clarity and be very angry that you are not going back there. And you are going to fight to stay out of there no matter what the cost.
that you are going to burn your own bridge for your survival, which means even if it costs you your dignity and your health and your everything you have, and even if you have to be another person to survive, you are getting out. Present tense. Cut the idea of you staying there or returning there from your mind and throw it away permanently because there are going to be tough times ahead and you can be half-assed and thinking, mm, maybe you should go back to my mommy after all, she wasn't that bad. Even if she wasn't that bad, the moment she sees you coming back after quote-unquote betraying her, she's going to be extremely bad. I'm always very triggered by the story of Gypsy Blanchard that she escaped her mom and when she came back, her mother beat her up and tied her like a dog to the bed and handcuffed her and beat her for days because she had the nerve to escape. And I'm going to say something that is really horrible, but I believe it's true and I've seen it and I was lucky enough to not experience it, but usually people who deprive you out of basic human rights and there is a pattern in your life story is a tragedy where you're deprived of your right to have sex, to have friends, to have a career and to have a personality. Do you know how the story ends? It ends with you dying. The final act on the abuser is the victim dying. And they don't have to directly kill you like my mother tried to do. You're going to die from the stress. You're going to die from a sudden illness or from a heart attack. And they're going to keep milking sympathy and supply even after you're gone. That's how it ends if you stay in that house. And I believe that even if you fail and even if you die, it's better to die on your feet than to live on your knees. It's better to die on your own terms. But if you did already, or if you're doing what I said on this video, you're not going to be the one to die. On the contrary, you're going to leave that house. You're going to start reclaiming yourself hour after hour, and their lives are going to be spiraling out of control hour after hour, because those people, they are hosts of parasites and they are also spiritual parasites. I mean, this doesn't make much sense when you first hear it, but they are people who are feeding off of each other and they also have smaller parasites on them. So when you're living and you stop being the balancing factor, everything gets completely out of control. And I experienced that in my own family. I experienced that on Kim's family. When I left my family, there were people who developed extreme substance abuse. Or if they had it and they were hiding it, it went completely out of control. Do you know why? Because they missed on a very important code that every time someone would come to my room to hit me or to abuse me or to degrade me, and then they would come to my room and there wouldn't be anyone there to hit. So they started hitting the person who was in front of them themselves. And I always say, give them enough rope and they will hang themselves. Sometimes you don't even have to take revenge directly. Just hide somewhere, stay safe. And like the art of war says, if you wait long enough by the river, the bodies of your enemies will come floating to you. Let them float to you. You didn't choose this. The person who is running away to survive is the good person. And usually if you're watching this video, you have exhausted every other way of reaching out to them and communicate how much you suffer. They know you suffer. They don't care that you suffer. If they are extreme, they are even happy and they feel you deserve to suffer because, hey, you weren't their extension. Hey, you, they weren't, you weren't who they want you to be. So let those people meet their fate, okay? It wasn't your choice, it was their choice and stop setting yourself on fire so that bullshit people are warm, okay? Thank you for watching.